Thank you, Secretary Ermita. Other cabinet members, Monching Giko, and the other uh, mayors who are here with us today. Uh, we have um, Congressman Anton Lagdameo and Congressman Y. Corat Zamora here with us. Good uh, morning to you. And uh, to all of you, to the municipal governments under the able leadership of uh, Monching Giko for spearheading this very important caravan that responds to issues on the environment and health. Congratulations to all of you. And thank you for the manifesto that you have presented, Monching. I understand this is a manifesto from all the caravans that have been done, starting with Region 1, because this caravan today is the culminating activity of all the caravans all over the country, as Jerry Calderon has reported to you. And I hope that among those commitments is a common commitment to put up or to invest in MRFs in your different barangays. I have just returned from the Conference of Leaders of the Non-Aligned Movement, or NAM, held in Egypt. And I spoke in behalf of Asia, and I express confidence that the developing world will be able to forge increased international solidarity as we work to address such significant global challenges as faster and more equitable levels of economic development and poverty alleviation, the quest for greater peace and security, which is an issue that unfortunately Mindanao knows only too well, closer interfaith dialogue, the protection of migrant workers, and climate change. Even there in the NAM, it was acknowledged that we must not lose sight of the challenges we were already addressing before the onset of the global economic crisis. And high on the list of these challenges is climate change. Amidst climate change, we have put into action our drive for energy security and environmental conservation. This includes initiatives for which financing up to $250 million could be sourced from the Asian Development Bank and through the trading of Philippine carbon credits. Now, as local government units, you have corporate powers. You can access this facility of the ADB and you can trade in carbon credits. In fact, as an example, this partnership is presently undertaking a program to replace incandescent bulbs with compact fluorescent bulbs. That is a national program of the DOE with the ADB, but you can have your own individual programs using carbon credits. Well, Sunny Alvarez is here, our presidential advisor for climate change, uh, and he's been talking to the ADB. Perhaps, Sunny, you can help them on how to access that ADB facility for which the Philippines can draw up to $250 million. It's actually a $2 billion facility, but every country can access up to $250 million. Also, one of the jobs of Sunny Alvarez as my PACC, is to participate in the crucial negotiations leading to the conference of the parties to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change to be held this December in Copenhagen. The Philippines is active in the preparatory discussions and negotiations because if we are going to impact the climate change dialogue, and we must, because we're going to be one of the, those who will suffer the most from climate change, we must carry a message to the ongoing meetings. We must remain actively involved in negotiations concerning carbon emission target, uh, reduction targets because we are not a big contributor to carbon emission which causes climate change, but we are a big victim. So we have to convince the other countries, the ones who are, reduce, uh, who are emitting a lot of carbon to reduce their carbon and to present their targets for carbon um, emission reduction. Also, because they have contributed 
to global warming because of their carbon emission, the industrialized countries should help somehow make up to that by uh, providing financing for countries like us who are not really at fault but who are victimized to adapt to climate change and also share with us technology that we can use to adapt to climate change. So the industrialized countries must decide before the Copenhagen meeting on how much they will reduce their carbon emission. And what they announce as a target will enable us to determine whether or not we can keep global temperature rise to less than 2%. Why is 2% so important? Because beyond that point, countries like us and our neighbors in Southeast Asia could lose as much as 6.7% of GDP yearly by 2010. We will 